Hey, Gunlocks here. So, we have a lot of info on MLB The Show 20. And they went through everything Diamond Dynasty style. Went through the new game mode showdown. We did our video yesterday on showdown. There wasn't a whole lot more information on it that was released. It's just basically an offline BR. Uh, seemed a lot like Hearthstone's uh, dungeon run type deal. Basically, you start off, I think the first one is free, just like BR. After that, there is a entry fee. But you get your team, you build it through these different like kind of perks and level ups and then you play a master so here they are drafting their team here go through their different rounds boom 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 go all the way to the perks where you pick that to kind of increase how you are uh, in certain situations or uh, certain pitches or whatnot so in the end once you go through all this equip your items all that there's a final showdown um, let's keep let's keep rolling to that this is 04 final showdown so basically there are bosses mini bosses that you can go through uh, there are rewards over here. Um, if you lose, you die, your your run is over. You can always skip to the final showdown right away. 20 outs to get four runs against the uh, the boss pitcher might be a little difficult for some people. Everybody's screaming muted in the chat again just to throw me off. Thanks, Twitch chat. Never change. Never change, you jerks. Okay, so, showdown. Basically what we talked about yesterday on the video, so I'm not going to go too much into it. Here they are actually playing 20 not going to really go for it. They, they quit out of it. But what I do want to get into is some of the first inning programs, some of the cards that we saw. So there is obviously similar missions to what we had last year. Win 10 games, rank seasons, move up in the inning program. We got Conquest. Tim Tebow is in the game this year. Super fucking hype. Willie Mays is over there with uh, Conquest too. So yes, the Tebow is here to save us all. And anyways, here are the goals that you get two different ways. There's hitting things on the map. Like there was last year. Here's Tebow's stats. They don't get out of the way, sadly. So we can't really see his stats very well. So his batting stats, it's a mystery. They don't get out of his way until later. Later, later, later. All right. So Willie Mays, Tim Tebow, moving on forward. And they get to some of the level rewards. You got dailies, showdown, mission. So there are ways of grinding up the levels, the XP, and different ways of grinding the game through like just playing the game is basically the way of grinding XP. There doesn't look to be some sort of Madden solo where you can repeat it over and over to get the level rewards, but we'll go through the level rewards in a little bit as they go through the inning one rewards. There's packs, nameplates, who gives a shit about nameplates for that stuff. Brian Roberts and some of the other cards to go through. Seaver done. I mean, this is cool, but these are basically useless cards, right? They're, they're golds. They're f fine early in the year. But some of the level rewards they're giving are fucking insane. Like, just so much better. This Todd Helton. Remember this Todd Helton right here because there is a prestige later. Roy Oswalt. Same idea. We'll keep fast forwarding. 96 miles per hour. 94 in the sinker. Remember those numbers too and his stats. And then Duke Snyder. It does look like Duke Snyder is a little bit worse than he was in the past. An absolute black hole against lefties. Good platoon bat though. Or a bat off the bench. So a little bit worse. But he has a really nice swing. A lot of lefties have really nice swings it feels like. Feels like they're better than righties in a lot of cases. There are some, some pretty glitched out righty swings too to be fair. So Team Affinity is back. And this year, it's going to be a little different than the past. Well, last year, which was the first um, year that they brought it in. So, Team Affinities. When you go into it, there's stages. Do you see how it says Stage 1 above where they have uh, highlighted over there or whatever it is? There's multiple stages that you can do. So, it'll unlock during the spring, summer, fall. So, basically, just like their intro videos, it changes with the season. And they said the spring one is going to come pretty soon after launch. So they do get through. They do show you basically how to get those, you know, different bonuses. With repeatable through extra base hits online. 150 online. 250 offline. So more offline grinding. Uh, if that's just what you want to do, you can do it. There's collections March to October. You guys have seen us talk about March to October. Basically how well you play in March to October on, on the higher difficulties gives you more team affinity points. So Will Crow, will he be good? Not sure. 81 overall. So these are prospect cards, as you see, are some of the unlocks. They went through a little tease there. Didn't really mean a whole lot. Juan Soto is the reward for the Nationals one. They had a little uh, roll right there. There's the stats for the Team Affinity. Um, nice stats, right? Super sweet. So the players are only going to get better as we uh, kind of move along in the spring, summer. But Soto stats looks like an absolute stud. There's so many good outfielders, though. So we'll see. There's some... Good reveals later. They just kind of talk about more affinity stuff. They revealed a few cards. Here's Nick Gordon, the 80 overall. 
Uh, I may have skipped it actually, actually, but but Buxton is kind of the more important card. Not that good at the dish, but an amazing outfielder. Arm is insane, fielding speed. So a defensive whiz, maybe a late inning substitution, but I probably wouldn't use him otherwise, uh, outside of just stealing bases for us. So solid team affinities. Um, pretty similar to last year, at least to start, but the really big news is kind of like the movement forward. There's Xavier Edwards, actually pretty solid, right? Good contact, vision, speed, fielding. Arm's a little bit worse than you want to see, but he's a second baseman, so arm doesn't matter as much. But yeah, really, really an amazing second baseman right there. That's kind of insane. So a slap dick prospect, and uh, Blake Snell is the Tampa Bay Rays reward. I don't know if you guys saw Blake Snell long enough. Four seamer at 96, curve, change, slider. Basically the standard for every single pitcher in this game. They all have fastball, change up, curve, slider. I don't know why, but it just seems like half of the guys have that. I, I don't know, but I guess that's just like the meta pitches in the major league, so they give them here. Um, just to make them relevant, they probably give a lot of guys random cards. So here is, you see Evolution. Evolution cards are kind of neat. They'll get to them in a second. Craig Biggio is a little bit of the rewards here. Vita, I could just kind of let this play out here. So these are choice packs here for level rewards as they go through them. You see Babe Ruth confirmed in the game again. Chrissy Matthewson, they went through his card. There's a starting pitcher card. They kind of flashback. There's the Babe Ruth, Jimmy Fox, Ted Williams, low bronzes again. Um, so they're not really relevant, but uh, maybe they will be in some sort of event going forward. If they do like a bronze event. Um, the evolution cards are these. Basically, you grab them, finish stat missions with these four cards. There's a couple other, like I talked about, prestige cards that we'll get to in a second. But they'll show off how you ev uh, evolve these cards from these silvers, bronzes into diamonds. Um, so a very cool concept, something that people who played NBA 2K are well aware of. Or I think 16 had some uh, similar upgrades in MLB The Show if you played it a few years ago. Anyways, more XP reward path here are golds. Not that big of a deal, not too relevant golds. Some of them are actually kind of cool. This Chipper Jones, again, you guys remember how good he was for so long last year. A switch hitter is so important. There's a lot of good switch hitters this year. It's going to be a nice year to put together an all-switch hitter team, especially they mentioned some prospects uh, with uh, Rushman getting a switch hitting catcher. So, um, oh, yep, yep, yep. here's the level 40 choice rewards between Mondesi, Morton, Victor Robles as they kind of just kind of take their time getting to the stats that they are. So another switch hitting middle infielder this time. Good contact versus lefty, but really struggles versus righties. I don't know if he's usable because the majority of the pitches you'll face will be right-handed. Talk about right-handed uh, pitchers. That Charlie Morton relief pitcher, going to be kind of cool. He was crazy in the postseason. Won the uh, World Series for that totally legitimate 2017 Astros team. Center field Sanchez. This card's kind of insane. This is kind of like throwback to their great cards. So him in 2017 was nothing but Dong City, right? Take me down to Dong City where the grass is green and the girls are pretty. Uh, and then uh, Reyes here throwing 97, sinker at 95, curve change slider. Great freaking tier. A little bit bad on the control there. So more choice pack here for the level rewards. As they move forward, that's level 40 choice. Now, you'll see a lot of um, a lot of these cards in these level rewards are just basically like god tier, right? It's something that I was hoping wasn't going to happen because it kind of limits uh, teams. Like right now, obviously, it's, it's going to be a little bit difficult to grind. But these cards, some of them looks... That, that Corey Kluber, when we get to it, this Hal Neuhauser is, is pretty good, right? 98 overall, over 100 for K and hits per nine. Throws a 98 mile per hour sweeping curve, change of slider, like... Remember how bad Clayton Kershaw was last year? Well, we just got like two of them, right? Hal right here is absolutely bonkers, right? A sweeping curve at 77. Sure, it was 72 mile per hour for Kershaw last year. That extra five mile per hour did actually make a difference. But yeah, what what this glory is, is even Ramon said this guy's going to be a problem. A cutter at 97, sinker 91, slurve 80, changeup. I mean, bonkers. And he's kind of crazy on control. So... This will be probably my selection. Maybe I'll do a video on, on the level rewards for which would to select. Uh, Madden's going to come in a little bit, E-I-L-I-R. Uh, Raleigh here. You guys know how hard his stuff was a hit because the the sinker to, wait for it, sinker, slider, fork ball. Fork ball was super nice. So this Raleigh always played above what his quote-unquote stuff showed. But yeah, really good movement on his stuff. Uh, but we'll see how well sinkers play this year because I'm sure they listened to our feedback. Uh, during the beta, sinkers were still pretty good. Ricky Henderson speed and willie mccovey power but kind of looks like a uh you know not necessarily a bench bat pretty good overall 
95 kind of feels like not that great for a first baseman. Slow. Although first baseman don't have to be fast, but like for his stats, just really just mashes kind of right-handers is, is what his, uh, I guess, power is in. So here are the level 100, aka silver level 1 rewards. Yeah, more 99. So we're going to have a lot of teams and we're going to see these cards a lot. What's great is they're not like huge names. They're not like, you know, Kershaw or some like, like Frank Thomas was an endgame first baseman and he came out right away. Whereas like the first baseman we just saw, let's get to their stats here. Uh, don't necessarily lead me to believe they'll be in a game like this Ryan Sandberg I don't his swing wasn't that good, but his stats were fucking amazing, right? So let's go back to that one. Let's wait till they disappear and Come on pause. All right, so over 100 contact over 100 vision and then powers in the 80s Dude, are you kidding me right off the fucking bat dudes if you level grind crazy? I mean it will take maybe a few weeks to a month for, for a lot of people to get a lot of these cards, but damn all I'll say is damn. So, obviously not a problem right away in the season. But, yeah, it'll be fun. Barry Larkin here. Power versus lefty. 104 for a shortstop. Dude is going to be a lefty killer. Even even 62 power versus righty because his context at 113 is still super valuable. Very good speed. Very good fielding. That kind of stuff. So, Larkin looking hot too. It's going to be a hard choice, I think. As we move over to... Come on, Mini. There it is. An outfielder, good good contact, decent, good speed. Power's a little bit lower than you want. A little bit lower. Are those the new Ultimate Legends of Madden? Not quite yet. Buster Posey. There's a lot of good catchers we saw this year. Buster, is he endgame at day one waiting on the stats? There it is. Buster. 125 contact versus left, 112 power. Even 103.73 for a catcher, especially with his defense. Blocking at 95, which means he can be like one of the best blockers in the game right away. I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it. At least at 99 overalls. I don't know if they'll be as dominating, but we will see a lot of those cards this year. So get ready to get sick of those players specifically. Um, okay, those are the Evo cards. They're going to move on. As you saw there, there was a few. Oops. Let's move forward. So they talk about these are ways, these moments. I don't know if you saw those moments there. These moments are a way for players to basically get into the game and uh, evolve their players through stage one. So you get your dentist accuracy, you play the moments, you bring them up into stage two. Now on stage two, there's missions and, and moments. Reggie Jackson, you forgot? Uh, did they show off Reggie Jackson's stats? I don't remember. Oh yeah, he had like 115 power. I could skip back for Reggie Jackson if you guys want to see his stats too. Um, here, here's here, Wait, did they not show off Reggie? When did they show off Reggie? Oh, here it is. All right, Reggie stats. 115 power versus righty, 110 power or contact, and then power versus lefty style too. So pretty freaking great uh, bat right there. Obviously, fielding and speed, a little lesser, but, I mean, 71 speed is is really usable, really, even, even later in the game. This is a great card. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I've used a Reggie card in a couple years, right? Because last year he was BR. But yeah, Reggie, Reggie should uh, cause some nightmares to a lot of pitchers. Is this a sport where you can hit people with a bat? I think any sport's a sport that you can hit people with a bat, as long as you're not afraid of the repercussions. All right, so stage two we talked about, using the missions and stuff to upgrade them. This Eckersley card, like they're like, oh, he's a problem. Like His sinker slider are solid, but I don't know. Eckersley, his per nines, his control, his walks per nine looks god tier, but man, stuff-wise... Man, he better have a shit ton of movement on those on those pitches. Otherwise, Eckersley is kind of ick. Not as god tier as uh, his card this past year is. Eddie Matthews, he has a great fucking swing. 105 power. Either a bench bat or a platoon bat for your third base. Otherwise, you know, maybe you're just like, all right, let's hope I face a righty every time. But not a bad player to kind of platoon. But otherwise, even against lefties, he did some damage for me this past year. Not the greatest speed. Okay in the field, though. So, Eddie Matthews. Solid Evo card if you choose him instead um, of the other ones we talked about in the level reward. So all I have to do is get those stat missions and uh, whatnot. Irod, here is here is his top card. Uh, not bad. I mean, I'd say it's a solid. It's not as good as uh, the other catcher we saw. Who was that? Posey. 
But, like, look at that arm, dude. Blocking is still super nice. Speed is actually really good for a catcher. It's a solid, balanced, all-around catching uh, guy. So I don't know who you, who you guys are going to choose at your first upgrade for this Evo. I kind of like Matthews because of his swing, but I can't have so many lefties on my squad. I'm hoping to do an all-switch hitter, all-lefty squad, right? Um, because I like the way some lefties swing the bat, like, really. Like, all the glitchy swings all seem to be left-handed, right? I guess, like, Donaldson for right-hander is pretty glitchy. Um, who also got a glitchy right-handed swing? Piazza was a really good swing this last year for me. Um, you can't hurt players with a bat in football. You can hurt players with a helmet in football. Why don't you be able to hurt them with a bat, right? One weapon equals another. Todd Helton, another Evo card. This was like the, remember, this was the, uh, Series 1 reward. If you get the stat bonuses, uh, with Todd Helton, you're able to boost them up to these stats, okay? And how you do that is right here. So you eat, you got to hit Todd Helton's, you got to have him in your lineup, online play only, and you got to use his stats to earn it, right? To get one half, like these are his stats that he got in like one half of those, one half of the year, 106 hits. So you can earn these things in BR too, these stats. You don't necessarily have to have the card from the first inning program. So this is something you can earn anywhere online play. So kind of cool with Helton. Um... Gary at Bronzo at 40. Yeah, Gary looks really sweet uh, for, for the catcher. That might be the guy I go with, too. Gary Sanchez cards always seem to play well, especially early in the year when we're playing on All-Star because, you know, it's easier to hit the ball and you just want the ball to go far. Roy Oswalt, another one getting EVO'd. He gets a 97 and a sinker up to 95 with his curve down to 71. So, yeah, the only thing that's downside here is those hits per nine. K per nine's okay. Like, at 88 is fine. But, yeah, 77 hit per nine might be a little bit easier for the ball to drop against him. Uh, but yeah, Roy Oswald looks like he's got phenomenal stuff with the with the the, the change and the break at ninety five too. Velocity, like break control, all great. So the Oswald uh, inning one Evo card, hot, 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 hot. Kluber's a no brainer for Cammer. Yeah, I'm thinking Kluber for the low rewards for Kluber. Nice. Duke Snyder, another good swinging lefty. Great contact, great power versus righties. Vision eighty six. Um, like I said, not bad speed seventy two. Um, so he's an Evo guy also, but does feel not as good as a lot of the other outfielders that we've seen. So there it is, the Prestige card, the Red Diamonds, uh, how to get, like, boost the overalls of your Blue Diamonds up through Prestiging. So we'll see as the, as the year goes along how many more Prestiges they add. I'm guessing it's going to come with every single inning program. They also went through packs and cards in the packs as they open them. It's very similar to last year with, like, odds out of them. They will be doing more headliners twice per week this year. They'll be doing headliners. You have Ballin as a habit packs uh, that guarantee a gold player or better. Uh, but Bagwell is, is one of the first headliners. You do get a headliner in your level rewards. You're not necessarily guaranteed Bagwell. Obviously, we all know how pack odds work. Uh, but, yeah, they have the locations as, as a way of finding him. Uh, just kind of a quality of life feature there for the different ways of getting Jeff Bagwell um, out of potential packs. So here it is. As you see, there are different choice pack contents. I'm not going to go through all their stats, but uh, there is the same thing as we got the card pack last year where you had the different rewards, high, medium, low, with your better chance of getting low cards out of the packs. Um, Pearson has the outlier quirk, which we've talked about before on the channel. One of the biggest changes to this year's game is the ability for him to throw 101 as his, as his uh, primary picks that exceeds max velocity. I wish they had outlier quirks. Like, I wish the knee buckler made his curveball curve more instead of telling you that, oh, okay, he's got a pretty good curve. I wish it allowed, like, more movement on these pitches than just, like, one one quirk making a difference. Like, because, like, those things those things are kind of, like, descriptive quirks rather than active quirks, if you guys get my drift on that. So, more active quirks, less that. So, yeah, I mean, solid cards overall, whatever. Here are the odds for the pack. Uh, one out of one, you're going to get an 85 diamond or better. One out of three, 87, or one out of 10, for the best. So they pulled the pack and got 87. So they get, they hit the 33% chance at getting that. Uh moving forward. They talked about ranked seasons. They didn't really they, they didn't really they, they, sorry. One big change here is the energy level to pitchers. It's no longer the pitcher roulette where it chooses a random starting pitcher throws it in. You can also do openers. Hey, thanks CJ Sauce for subbing. Uh they can also do they <laughs> quirks low. Um uh, they can also you can so you can do openers BR and every the three batter minimum is in effect so three batters minimum unless you finish an inning 
then you can bring out a new uh uh I almost said core right starting pitch or, or reliever so starting pitchers can come in relief too and they can't regain their energy unless they're a part of the starting rotation uh without you know playing right so just like regular real starters IRL they can come in like postseason players so that's kind of it's like more like an energy pool here just about with your players and it it, it, it they say it goes up and down uh based off the amount of innings you're pitching in that game, whether it's nine or three, so your pool will vary if you're in your BR versus ranked seasons, and it'll be a little different. Um, yeah, the game I can't wait for either, Scarecrow. It's it's gonna be kind of fucking sweet. Everything we've seen here. The only L right now is the collection changes. So if you collect a card, you can't quick sell it or put it in other collections. So that kind of sucks. But uh, that's something for them to, I don't know, cheese us out of some ways of making some stubs. But here are the BR rewards. I'm super disappointed, Edgar and Edgar and Jim. Edgar, I love I love his swing. I love his card at the end. This is signature series at the end of 19. In Edmonds, we knew at the beginning of the year, his St. Louis Cardinals uh, collection reward was fucking phenomenal. Hit over 400 for me. Yeah, so that Edmonds, super disappointed. These low 90 overalls are going to be like hundreds of thousands of stubs because 12 and 0 flawless. It's I feel like 12 and 0 flawless will be harder this year because of the changes to the pitcher pool so you'll no longer be able to kind of like just use shitty starters summon after one you'll get random starters and you might go against your opponent's best starter when you kind of are, are have to start like a bronze or something so you're gonna have to be deeper at pitchers this year uh joe adele solid looking card in the center field a righty bat there, kind of well balanced there's also new nameplates if you go flawless 20 times a battle royale you can get a nameplate for it so a little disappointing i don't think they went through their stats on those cards uh, actually they didn't. And then, uh, they laughed. He talked about collections. Huge fucking L. We spammed L in the chat when he talked about it. Uh, they went through ranked season rewards. Here are the World Series rewards. Juan Pierre, Roger Hornsby, and Russian Juan Pierre, another speedy outfielder kind of a replacement for maybe Kenny Lofton there. Uh, arm isn't that strong. Uh, but, uh, overall a, uh, a well hidden fool right there. He'll get on base a lot for you. Uh, we'll see how his swing is. I know there's a lot of people that are fans of Juan Pierre. Um, Roger Hornsby, he, he had like a, I didn't really love his swing last year, but he could play second and third, so pretty good positions there. Second base, he might lock that down if you get him at the World Series reward. And then Adley Rushman here, the catcher. This one looks like the best one to me. Um, I don't know. It's going to be between him and, oh, him and Gary Sanchez, I guess, early on for me. A switch, a switch hitting catcher, though, uh, with that kind of defense and decent, well-balanced hitting stats across the board. I don't know. Maybe I'll stick with a Sanchez early and then get somebody like uh, Rogers at the lockdown second base for a while. Uh, because we'll make World Series. I don't know how soon we will, but we'll probably enjoy ourselves as we get through there. So maybe not right away. Maybe it'll take me a couple weeks because we might not spam ranked seasons at the at the start of the game. But who knows? Maybe we'll. We'll be streaming a lot of it um, and, and raging, of course. Um, Team Affinity. And I think that's what else do they have left. One hour and eight. Oh, the cap is back. It's they say it's very similar to last year, so that sucks. Um, not a fan of the cap myself, but a lot, I know a lot of people are big fans of Big Daddy Dick. And then Mickey Mantle was confirmed. This I was so hyped when they confirmed Mickey Mantle. Dude, this shit was so cool. When they like, oh, Yankees, left-handed, right-handed. Oh my God, number seven, one of the greatest ball players of all time, fast as fuck. Powerful as fuck. Hit the ball 600 feet. Great batting average. Yeah, so Mantle, absolutely insane. Really glad they brought him. Was one of my top three wanted legends for this year. So that's a huge fucking name. But he's not going to be the live series reward. He's going to be. He's going to get a, a rookie card out of those pre-order packs. Uh, so he's an 86 overall to start the year. So strange uh, that he is not going to be the live series reward. Because he would have been an end game card if he was a live series reward. Um... And then I want to go through that. They, they went through some of the artwork. I didn't talk enough during this thing. The artwork on these cards is absolutely phenomenal this year, right? Like the difference, we're not all just going to have signature series cards in our lineup. They're going to have uh, the Silver Slugger. They said they're going to have um, Gold Glove. They have, you see the, the Soto card. They have the Prospect cards. They got the Bagwell Tops. They got that uh, BGL Signature Series, like you see. The Mickey Mantle Prime cards are new too. So there's so many different card art styles. I fucking love it. I love that they embrace the history of baseball and they bring out not only guys' cards that they had back in the day during their prime, but they also bring in like their own custom artwork too to a lot of cards that we see. Uh, so, 
I love it. MLB The Show is looking super hot this year. That's the end of it. Yes, American cricket trumpet. But uh, thanks for watching Call to Action. I'll see you guys. What do you guys think of the comments? Let me know. Thanks for watching Call to Action. I'll see you tomorrow.